Hi guys, I have some poetry I'd like to share with you. I've written about 20 poems over the past few years, and I think poetry is kind of like uh, music. It's better performed than read. I have an image to go along with each poem, and I'll also give a little bit of background to set the mood. So here goes. Ice fissure, slick the descent, glistening the fall. Below a grand hall of frozen wet walls, stalagmites, stalactites, silent perils well behind. The journey continues, deep in a trench, fissured through glass, long as an ocean current, thin as a whisker, though today wide as a man, deep as the cold and deep as you dare. Sandstorm. Lizard on the tusk of an angry desert rock, sand grains beneath his scales, Hiss on the breeze, dune says dim the lights please, all have been submerged. Pirates. The sweat glimmered like jewels on the wiry mane on the pirate's chest, was like the sun, today resembled a broiled tomato, was the last of the fruit. His gnarled fingers curled on the sword, shimmering, Hinting at reality hacks in the treasure chest, finally spilled gold the color of his single front tooth. The crew romped as if none had scurvy, staved off by oranges growing on land ho, called to extol finding islands, green groves of fruit, with booty at last, me hearty. Gargoyle. Time ticks, rock chips, talons reflexively curl. Rested wings spread, showers in lead, city nightlife below. Shaking head steps off ledge, stone no longer binds him in place. Swoops of glee, civilians flee from this creature's wicked smile. All right, this one I wrote um, while at work, at sort of like an office job, summer, summer work, and I was thinking about going back to Principia, my college. Morning at work, but print minded Waiting, waiting, brain dead and waiting. My office locked till nine strikes the clock to let in the sleepy me. Sleepy, sleepy, pillow-eyed sleepy. Near keys clacking, radio chatting, break room stowaway me. Waiting, waiting, ecstatic elated, flying in four towards the Mississippi and more for people waiting for me. History of a moon crater. Silence. Impact. Billow of dust. Tidal wave cloud. Crystalline. Slow motion. Silence. Ice crystals fracture. Suspended. Spinning. Fain a tinkling. Silence. Sphere to globe. Crater walls explode. In the breezeless, starlit silence. Awareness. Guys, okay, I wrote this one, I think, at college thinking about going back home to West Virginia. I live away with the setting sun, making plans for sunrise when I will return home to mountains and fathomless caves. I live in a bed of roses, thorns well-placed and paid for, readying me, teaching me to tackle the whirl of our real world. I live in someone else's dreams, searching for the moments to make my own, to prove that dreams are powerless. I live in monotony, occasional gulps of air, but how I stare, the trance is broken, there is life here. All right, this one I wrote in conjunction with an anonymous fellow, and we had a poem duet, Memory. Walking down the road, chain link fence on my side. Which side of the fence am I on? Is it keeping me out or protecting me from what is within? Sunlight fading, dusk has begun. Never know what would have been, can't go back to how things were, must move on somehow. A disheveled sky, scraps of colored paper arranged into a sunset nearby. Fence pierced by wincing moonlight, who put it up and why? It can be climbed. The sidewalk meanders with me past a dumpster, slouches in rust by the fence still ambiguous, faceless, reaching from history, can seem like a foe, let it go. All right, fractal. Tectonic plates thrust from the deep, aspiring to mountains, crumbling skywards, similar to their many crags built of yet smaller boulders made of stone chips look like fractured tectonic plates. Fractal, 
human mind, developed from time, the evolution of Earth, the mind as a globe, innumerable untapped depths, infinite sides, spinning daily, energy courses throughout, changes, each continent, a designated flavor, a twist on the hot core, personality, able to cope with varieties of situations in reality, cultivate, preserve, put to death pollution. Bliss. Flowing bed of feathers beneath the cured wood, rock the boat gently in the fresh night. The sea flashes, glinting smiles at the stars. What a pity it would be to sail over such happiness. Nestled in the safety of infinity, the one-man raft envisions nowhere else, knowing it is already at home. Bottled emotion. Where is the chaos? Where is the storm? More than anything I've ever witnessed form. In these trances, I'm awake in awe at the sheer magnitude of the maw, of thoughts vortexing concentric on me. Stargazing. I'm sitting on a Mario asteroid, watching stars fly by. Each one holds a different burst of thinking. Some are more fun. Some hold more points. How do you rate a thought? Line count per stanza equals decrementing powers of two. I have two waves crashing in my head. For easy visualization, one is blue and one is red. One energizes me to do work and make life my own. One subtly encourages me to go to bed. One is obviously good and the other bad. The problem is sides change depending on perspective. Where do I find the strength to topple the foundation of a wave? Genevieve. One of three leaves fell in the post-summer breeze, down but not out because someone had the keys. By the ravine, we too, in darkness serene, comrades we found, now tell others the scene. Narnia. This poem's a lot more recent. The other ones were from college. I think a couple might have been from high school. But uh, this one I wrote a lot more recently, and almost all the poems are written in sort of fits of imagination. Okay. Whispering willows and thistles of yellow darts the fast rabbit tonight through the wardrobe and forest, the ice queen before us. Aslan, what terror and might! Grab tar and fire, we'll incinerate her ire. Just save the creatures, all right? Now back to the land forged by human hand, Victory, we've thwarted the fight. Mirror Woods. I went to Mirror Woods uh, with a couple friends, and we got there before it severely flooded, but it was flooded by the time we left, and so we were walking through these paths that were just rushing and gushing with water, and so I wrote a poem about it. Kind of a children's rhyme. The frog and the nematode in their mushroom abode, a dwelling orange lit by a hearth or so it goes, they were weathering a storm, a flash flood of water warm, in their fungy house so wobbly, glowing radiantly as it poured. At once they heard a scrip, oh, their foundation did rip, off to see the great gully, frog and nematode were swept. All right, this one I was thinking about the part in Ponyo, as you can see in the background, where the magic and potions just sort of explode and bring to life Ponyo herself and all of her friends, and there's just magic and swirls of color and, and undersea stuff everywhere, kind of like in um, Little Mermaid, I guess, in parts two. Swirls, sprouting colors, spouting globules, buttery, bubbly butterflies, whirlpool of sunken treasure, oil paint, rainbow supernova, tie-dye flock of fat fish. The genie of the lava lamp is free. All right, I went to Skrillex with a friend, and I wrote a poem about that. A million bees with two million wings levitate the room with everyone in it. Three million decibels deep below Davy Jones' locker, gush through the hall, breathing waterfalls of audio napalm. The overload max, you stand there, silent, alone, and then the universe drops. The photo I used in the background here was one I took. Also, the one of Mirror Woods was one I took. And the last poem, 
is nice and lighthearted to finish it off. Shoo. Slip soft, tender tufts of cloth until a spiffy bow takes form on your foot. All right, I do have one other poem, and I guess I'll share it. Um, it's slightly more personal than the rest, but I think it's a good poem. Gift. What's in a gift? The intention behind, inside. Love, leaning, leaving a landmark, memory. Gift. Creative representation from me to you. Of this, what to do, what to give, bite slip. Is it a gift to give you me, daily happy me? Gift. Planned surprise, extraordinary to show I, to show you are to me precious. Thanks for listening.